Hey guys, I'm Josh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little PC upgrade, if you will, as well as testing thermals with the Ryzen stock cooler that I have on there for the Ryzen 5 3600 with a new air cooler, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. A lot of you guys have been posting comments in my build video saying that I should just look into getting a cooler. So I actually picked one up, specifically this one. I was interested in the Be Quiet brand just because I have an AIO that looks pretty nice as well that's pretty budget. So when I do want to upgrade this sometime later on in the future and get an AIO, then I'll have a little bit of experience with this brand. I also picked up just some RGB fans. I saw somebody make a video on this in their build video, so I wanted to try that out just because of the fans that I have in there are pretty noisy right now, as well as you cannot change the RGB colors, they're not addressable. So we're gonna be adding those in after we do the thermal test. And as always, before the video even starts, if you could please leave a like on the video, it really helps a small channel like mine grow. And I have been noticing you guys hitting that like button and subscribing, and we've grown quite a bit in the past just couple of videos, so I wanna say thank you for that. It seems like it's going really well. So without further ado let's unbox these items so here's just a quick unboxing of the pure rock 2 by be quiet comes in a really nice box with a little qr code for the instruction booklet and stuff like that as well as just a couple specs about the cooler itself and just opening the box up we find it nicely greeted to us right up at the top and when we look inside we find the cooler itself the other components as well as just the fan greeted to us right there just on first glance the cooler has a nice weight to it but not too heavy to kind of pull the motherboard down at all and of course it has like the all black look which is super nice with the brushed aluminum up top with the Be Quiet logo looking nice right in the middle. Literally everything about this cooler is blacked out so I'm sure it'll fit any color combo that you can go with. Even blacked out copper pipes with thermal paste already pre-applied. Also included is their Pure Wings 2 fan. This is a PWM fan that can spin up to 1500 RPM and is also quite quiet coming in around 20 to 25 decibels depending on load. Here we have just the accessory box. It comes with four mounting clips for fans, so you can add up to two if you wanted to do a push-pull configuration. It does only include one, but if you have a spare or if you wanted to grab another one of these Pure Rock fans for I think it's around $10, you can do so. Next up is just the mounting hardware for any motherboard, and here is the piece that you use for either one, as well as the screws that go along with it. Here included is the AMD bag, AM4 or AM3 and here is the Intel with the 11 variant. Okay so we've just got everything that we need right now so I've got the PC down here as well as you need just a Phillips head screwdriver, the cooler and if you have a cooler on there already just getting some isopropyl alcohol as well as coffee filters to get off the thermal paste really help. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do that so I don't know if like a microfiber works but you know coffee filters for sure. So here's just the install portion of the cooler. As you can see I'm taking off my old stock AMD Ryzen cooler and if you're putting this on for the very first time you can just skip this step but install is pretty much the same. When I lifted up the cooler the CPU came out with it unfortunately but I have seen this happen before so I didn't really worry about it too much. Over here I'm just checking to see if any of the pins got bent or anything because this is also my very first time doing this. So I didn't want anything to get damaged in the way. So, I mean, overall, I think it worked fine. And really nothing to fear, I guess. Here, I'm just putting back the CPU because, well, it came out with the cooler, so. <laughs> and if you are replacing the cooler, I just grabbed my isopropyl alcohol as well as coffee filters, and I'm just getting a thermal paste off of the cooler just the best I can, since we don't want to sandwich in more thermal paste over it. Here I'm just installing the AMD socket brackets as well as the spacers that go along with it. Those only go in one way so you can't really go wrong there. And if this is your first time installing a CPU cooler like it was mine as well, or something aftermarket at least, uh, it wasn't that bad honestly. It probably took me about 20 to 30 minutes but that was just because I was going slow in recording as well. So honestly if you've done it before or you're also just doing it for the very first time, I think 15 to 20 minutes should be more than enough time. So here I'm just throwing on that pressure bracket that can also only go on one way. And since this cooler came pre-applied with thermal paste, I'm not re-adding my own, so we don't have to add any ourselves. And then we just go ahead and add those two little bolts that came in the bag, and just screw it down, making sure to tighten right and left just little by little so that we're not putting too much pressure on one side so that the thermal paste kind of becomes lopsided while during this installation. 
Next up we're just going to add our fan using the little clips that I provided as well as remembering to plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. This also took a couple minutes just because I didn't want to seem like I was breaking something but after watching a video or two it just seemed to clip onto the sides of the fan so you really do kind of have to pull hard especially if you bought this new so don't worry about breaking anything um, like I was so I think so you know just kind of hammer it in one way and then go the other way is pretty much what I ended up doing and that seemed to work pretty well. And here's what the cooler looks like when it's all installed. It's got a real nice look to it with it being all black and I think it adds a nice little beefy aspect to the machine just because the cooler is kind of big. And here I'm just going to put my mic up to the fan just so you can hear it. And now for temperature testing. So I was just using this article that I'll leave linked down in the description. This is basically saying that your CPU ideally stays under 80 degrees Celsius under load. And for an idle temperature of around 50 degrees Celsius, so that those are kind of the specs that we're going to be using as kind of a baseline. Here you can see that the AMD stock cooler is inside of the machine while we're doing our testing. And I made sure to keep all variables the same. So I started out with idle for about 15 minutes and then starting off with the single core Cinebench test and then going on to the multi-core so that the CPU is kind of you know quote unquote warmed up before we do the multi-core and with that we'll also be taking a look at scores and see if there's any performance gain so after about three minutes the CPU under single core was around 70 degrees celsius which is already creeping up a little bit higher with the stock cooler and here I am just running the multi-core. As you can see, there's about 20 seconds remaining and it just stopped or maxed out at 95 degrees Celsius with the stock cooler running at a 3.9 megahertz speed clock. And as you can tell, that kind of exceeds the 80 degrees to 90 degrees Celsius threshold that we wanted to keep as kind of a baseline or like a good working temperature. So, you know, stock cooler for heavy CPU workloads is probably not the best idea. Well, once it's finished, we can see the score for our multi is 9,007 and our score for the single core is 1,222 with an MP ratio of 3.7x. I'll have a graph of this very soon here, but just keep that in mind. And here we've installed the new Pure Rock 2 cooler. And we can already tell a difference in idle temperatures. We're idling right around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big change already. So after running the single core benchmark for about six, seven minutes right over there, we see that the temperature is 557 degrees Celsius or hovering right around there. So that was the idle temperature of the rising stock cooler. So we've already beaten that pretty much, you know, kind of out of the water even with the single core, you know, kind of hammering away for six minutes plus. And here I am just running the multi-core and it's been running for about six, seven minutes as well. And as you can see, the temperatures are around 80 degrees Celsius, which is right at kind of where we wanted the working temperature to be with a clock speed of higher uh, with 4.0 pretty much. And I'm sure we can get these temperatures a bit cooler as well if we just mess with the fan curve. This is just a stock fan curve, so if we wanted to make it a little bit higher, we definitely could go ahead and do that. And as you can see, we also had a score boost as well with an MP ratio of 3.47. So this did give us a little bit of a performance boost in the process. So if you're just gaming and doing like normal workloads, the Ryzen stock CPU cooler is definitely more than enough. You know, for a stock cooler that comes with a CPU, Ryzen ones are pretty good. Now if you are planning on doing content creation stuff or hitting the CPU pretty hard, then I would recommend getting a aftermarket cooler. As you can see, the temperature has definitely helped and it also gave, a, and it also gave us a pretty decent performance boost. One that we may not notice like right away, but for longevity of the CPU and just for having cooler temps in general, so that maybe if you wanted to overclock a little bit, you could definitely do so. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this helped in deciding on whether the stock cooler or you know getting an aftermarket cooler is for you. And again, thanks for watching and have a good one.